biggest South Asian media group, Y Media. Y Media. Y Media has newspaper, midweek, radio, South Asian Pulse, television. You are watching Channel Y. Channel Y. A South Asian Canadian channel. Online South Asian Daily.com. The biggest South Asian media group. Y Media. You are watching Channel Y. Channel Y. A South Asian Canadian channel. Welcome back to Channel Y and today we are talking about Canada India Foundation and their upcoming awards gala. Anilji, I'll come to you and I'll probably ask the same question, you know, what are your viewpoints? Canada India, we've discussed uh, the free trade agreements, our Prime Minister, uh, Canadian Prime Minister has been visiting India quite, quite often. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji, he was here uh, in Canada uh, recently. The bilateral trade as we were earlier discussing is 6.15 billion. We want it to be moving up 10 billion, 15 billion they say is the target and which is very little, the trade that Canada does with China, the trade that Canada does with US, it's very little. So, you think there are certain see obstacles? Of no. course, of course. There is, um, see, with United States, there are two things. The banking comfort. Today, to trade with India, there are not many banks here in Canada who would support supplies because you need financing. Any trader, any supplier, any producer would, who has to sell material in India would require financing because all the products that you are going from here right. to India are high, I mean price sensitive. Not only price sensitive, they are highly priced, right? So like for example, nickel, you are looking at about close to $9,000 a ton. A $9,000 a ton product, if you have to ship it to India, it's a lot of money for one 24 ton lot. But the banks are not comfortable shipping it into India. Not all the banks. There are a few banks like who I use, one of them, or the Indian banks that we have here, they are a little easy. Doing trades with India, their comfort levels are different. Yeah, without naming any banks, uh, what are their ha hesitations? Well, their hesitations because their comfort zone is not there. Like a lot of these Canadian banks, their comfort level is with America. They would rather finance a, or mortgage a home or a finance a vehicle rather than giving a trade finance. So the exposure to the trade finance for the Canadian banking system is very different. If you look at the European banks, and you know if you're looking at them, there's a 360 degrees difference between the Canadian banks and the US, I mean Canadian and the European banks. And if you look within American banks and Canadian banks, there's a 180 degree difference. So comfort level with the American, easy credit, they would rather give a credit to an American company than sell material into India and provide credit or facilities to that supplier because their comfort level is not there with India. The third thing, and which is a very important factor, this <coughs> products that we are talking about, what Canada has in ample, whether it is potash, what my friend said, whether it is the pulses, whether it is the base metals, whether it's the precious metals, or any of these items, they all are price sensitive. Day-to-day -day price fluctuations. So if you have to ship the material from Canada to India, it takes almost 45 days, six weeks approximately for a cargo to reach there. And unless somebody hedges that product, the price sensitivity creates that volatility and the volatility creates a problem because if the market goes up, the customer is happy and he'll make money. But if the price goes down, he ends up losing money, which is detrimental to his interest. So with the new government uh, in India, they're saying th they were elected on the basis of development, they want to increase trade and the Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji, he's been on foreign tours, he's, he was here in uh, Canada as well. We signed a quite a few agreements and now we are uh, listening that yes, our Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, he's about to visit India, that's what we heard. Uh, it hasn't been confirmed as of now. But what do you think? Will these, uh, you See, know, yeah, go ahead. The politician, they do their job. The business, happens because of them, yes, to some extent, but the reality of the business is totally different. I mean, signing a piece of contract that I did a bilateral trade with Indian Railways and we signed that we will supply or make the bogies out there, right? There is a possibility that Tata's are 
going to have a joint venture which will be set up along with our company in Montreal who they're going to make the make in India coaches for the railways. Okay, it's a joint venture. Whether that agreement is signed, it's got a huge value if you talk, put it in the terms of dollar figure. But there is not a single dollar which has gone there. There is not a single dollar that has come here. It's going to be a time simply matter. It's going to take a few months, maybe a year, two years to set up the plant, factory, and produce the scotches. The agreement is there, the prime ministers would have announced it, but in reality, the real value is where the uranium supplies are. What the Prime Minister of India, Mr. Narendra Modi announced it when he was here. That has the real value because uranium has started going into India, physically. And the money is coming back, coming from India to Canada. Those are the real trades. Right. You know, whereas just signing the agreement doesn't make a contract. It doesn't make a trade. Canada India Foundation is quite an influential uh, organization. So now, uh, I think NLG and yourself have highlighted quite a few issues. So how does Canada India Foundation facilitate, you know, trade between Canada and India? Well, uh, like I said, that our major impact is in changing mindsets or getting the mindsets of politicians and business leaders more favorably inclined towards India and vice versa. The new government in India, well, it's a 20-month-year-old government in India, has announced a series of steps, including 100 brand new e-cities based on third-tier, fourth-tier cities that exist today. These cities need to be adopted by Canadian governments or Canadian businesses and the infrastructure that is required for these cities should be provided by Canadian businesses. Infrastructure from transportation to electronics to infrastructure, basically. Like, you know, there are roadways to be built. There are transportation systems. There are hub and spoke models to be built. There are policing, you know, administration systems to be given. Canada has a lot to offer because we have built some of the finest cities in the world. Vancouver and Toronto and Montreal are recognized to be world leading good quality cities in the world. So we have a lot to offer to these big cities that are going to come in India as the population from the rural area gets more urbanized in India itself classic opportunity. So this is what we are trying. We did that before Kathleen Wynne went to India, right? And she's taken interest in that. We will do that again when our new prime minister goes to India and focus more on building strategic relationships and getting involved in India rather than just merely signing MOUs which Anil just espoused a minute ago, which really does not deal with something, but get more things tangible done. And this can all be done on the back of the strong people-to-people -people relationship that we've got right now. That's good to hear. Uh, Anil, we're coming back on to the gala now. So this year, uh, our viewers would certainly like to know that who is the award recipient this year, and if you could also explain his credentials as well. Okay, before I go into that, I'd like to describe you this award, you know. It recognizes basically the transformation of India into a global economy. This is what this, this was his brainchild, this particular award, the design, the concept. It came out at seven years, nine years ago. It celebrates the contribution of a particular individual in that particular year. It raises, obviously, the global profile of all Indian origin people. It carries a $50,000 Canadian dollar prize, which goes to the favorite charity of the award recipient. And it's the first award of its kind outside of India, which is being awarded. So the CIF Chanchalani Global Indian Award is one of its kind. This year's recipient is Dr. Shubhash Chandra the chairman 
uh, of Z and SL group, the ZTV, the multi is a known as the media mogul, the chairman of the SL group, a very self-made man, first generation billionaire, started from scratch. Recently, he has put up his autobiography called The Z Factor, which was launched by the current Prime Minister, Mr. Narendra Modi, just about a month or two months ago. It's, the man has done and achieved a lot to be worthy of this award. And we are happy that he has agreed to accept the award in person. So he would be coming on April the 21st. We are having various meetings set up for him. There would be the gala, of course, and that time he would be given the award. If this award is being given by a chief guest. I would like to maintain surprise at the moment for who the chief guest is. I have reasons for that to not disclose the name at the moment. But believe in me, it's, that person is a very high achieved individual in the Canadian government. Right. So having said that, Dr. Uh, Subhash Chandra is one man who deserved this award this year. Okay. I uh, would like to remind our viewers once again that on the screen you can certainly uh, visit the website of uh, Canada India Foundation. Also the phone numbers if you want to get in touch, if you want to buy any tickets or any tables, mm -hmm. you can certainly have that. Ajiji, anything else that you want to quickly add? Well, I just wanted to let you know that uh, yes, uh, Anil did mention that $50,000 is given to a charity of the recipient's choice. And this year is the first year that that choice is a Canadian charity. Yes. It is in education, in the field of education. So we are very proud that all the work that we are doing is ending up in Canadian hands right, and will hopefully help Canadians progress better in their education. Apart from that, uh, as Anil said, this is a unique award given to a global Indian and the criteria is that this person should have made all of us global Indians. Whether Indians in India or Indo-Canadians or American Indians or British Indians or whatever you may call, made all of us proud. Dr. Subhash Chandra will be a recipient of this award and as a result has made us all proud. Thank you. And anything else that you want to add? Well, not really, unless you have a specific question, but uh, we can go on on the subject of the trade between India and Canada and this bilateral trade agreement you are talking about, but besides that, no, I don't have anything. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Analdi, and thank you very much, Ajiji, for uh, taking our time today. So that's all the time that we have, gentlemen, today. But uh, once again, we'd like to remind our viewers, Canada India Foundation, the website is on your screen right now, and you can certainly give them a call if you need any uh, tickets. Umid karte hain aapko aaj ka hamara karikram zarur pasand aaya hoga. Yudhir Jaiswal ko yehi jazat de. Keep watching Channel Y. Channel Y, a South Asian Canadian channel. Call Rogers or Bell today and subscribe to Channel Y. Channel Y. For more information, visit SouthAsiaDaily.com. You are watching Channel Y. Channel Y. A South Asian Canadian channel.